Hi everyone, this is Don Grimm. Case reserves and IBNR are commonly used concepts in the PNC insurance industry. In this short video, we'll explore the key differences between case and IBNR and we'll review a simple example to further our understanding. Let's get started. Case reserves and IBNR, which is short for incurred but not reported, are types of loss reserves. Collectively, we refer to case and IBNR as loss reserves or unpaid claim liabilities. Case reserves are estimates of unpaid claim liability for a specific claim. Case reserves are generally established by claims administrators on a claim by claim basis. The administrator reviews the details of each claim and uses best practices to estimate future payments. IBNR is the portion of unpaid claim liability not covered by case reserves. IBNR is generally estimated by actuaries on an aggregate basis. There are four sources of IBNR. The first is called case reserve development. This tends to be the most significant source of IBNR. Case reserves, on average, tend to be too low to cover the unpaid liability for known claims. Does this mean the claims administrators are doing a bad job? Absolutely not. Case reserves are not intended to contemplate all of the various possible outcomes for each claim. That would be a difficult and inefficient approach. Instead, case reserves reflect the most likely future payments based on a limited review of each claim. On the other hand, IBNR is calculated on an aggregate basis where the characteristics of a group of claims can be used to advantage. Essentially, IBNR benefits from the law of large numbers, wherein uncertainty related to future payments is reduced as the population of claims grow. The second source of IBNR is late reported claims. A claim is covered under an occurrence policy based on the date of loss, even if it is reported after the end of the policy period. This means that a reserve is necessary even if a claim has not yet been reported. The third source of IBNR is reopened claims, which is fairly self-explanatory. The last source of IBNR is pipeline claims. Pipeline claims are those claims that have been reported but are still in the administrative pipeline, so they have not yet been processed by claims administrators. In the next part of the video, we'll look at a hypothetical scenario that illustrates the aspects of case reserves and IBNR we've discussed so far. In this example, we have a workers' compensation insurance program with one policy year beginning on January 1st. A loss reserve estimate is needed at the end of the same year on 1231. As of 1231, we discover that there are 10 open claims. Claims administrators have estimated the following case reserves for the 10 open claims. The chart on the left displays the case reserves in yellow. The sum of case reserves for all open claims equals 185,000. Actuaries use this information and more to calculate an estimate of IBNR equal to 300,000. Note, we are not going to discuss the process of calculating IBNR here. The purpose is to understand why it is necessary. Recall that IBNR is calculated in aggregate and is not specifically related to any one claim. In total, loss reserves as of 1231 equal 485,000, which comprises 185,000 of case reserves and 300,000 of IBNR. This is the estimate of unpaid claim liability for the policy year as of 1231 and includes claim specific estimates, case reserves, and the actuarial aggregate estimate, IBNR. Let's look at an example of each source of IBNR that contributes to our $300,000 estimate. First, suppose claim number one, which has a case reserve estimate as of 1231 of $25,000, settles sometime after 1231 for $75,000 instead. This represents adverse case development of $50,000. This is an example of case reserve development and the key reason IBNR is necessary. Just to mention, case reserve development can be negative too, but in practice, especially over a group of claims, case reserve development is usually a positive amount. 
Next, suppose a claim, let's call it claim number 11, was reported after 1231, but has a date of loss sometime in the policy year under review. Obviously, this claim has no case reserve as of 1231, since its existence was unknown. This is an example of a late reported claim, and any payments associated with this claim must be accounted for in the estimate of IBNR as of 1231. Next, let's consider claim X, which was closed sometime before 1231. Because it was closed, no case reserves were established as of 1231. This is an example of a reopened claim. Any payments related to this claim, again, must be accounted for in the 1231 estimate of IBNR. Lastly, let's look at claim number 10. As it turns out, this claim was reported shortly before 1231. Claims administrators had not completed the claim review and therefore established no case reserves as of 1231. This is an example of a pipeline claim. And once again, any payments related to the claim must be accounted for in the 1231 estimate of IBNR. I hope you found this brief explanation helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I invite you to visit me at archeractuarial.com.